Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Run out the guns. Stand by this tower battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. peaceful retirement and far removed from those days of stress and excitement. The loss of my old friend and colleague, Captain Bush, is still a poignant memory. At that time, when it had only just occurred, it seemed unbearable, unbelievable. But as I sat receiving Colonel Dobbs' report in my room at the Hotel de Ville, I realized that I could hope no longer. It seems that when Bush led his boats up the river to attack the powder barges, his own boat was last seen right beside the barge that blew up. Well, if that's the case, sir, there would have been no chance whatever of his survival. I fear not, sir. General Keogh says that he found and buried the remains of a number of men, but none was identifiable. I see. Poor Bush. He served with me for the greater part of my career, you know, it was while we were escaping from our imprisonment in France that he lost his leg, and only for this. He died in action, sir. He would have wished that. Yes, he'd have wished a naval action, not a bloody skirmish on a riverbank. And peace is on the horizon, Dobbs. The Allied armies are already closing in on Paris. If only Bush had survived this one last skirmish, he would have enjoyed peace and retirement. I doubt if he would have enjoyed retirement, sir. Captain Bush was... He's coming. Well, what is it, Captain Hard? A sloop of war gazelle, just entering harbor, sir. Oh. She's wearing the Bourbon flag at her main and signaling that she has on board the Duchess of Angelin. Has she, by thunder? Well, haven't I enough trouble making the Duke behave without his wife as well? Oh, well. I'll have to receive her on the key, I suppose. Um, tell the Duke... Um, a range about salutes, sir. Uh, Brown? Where's Brown? Where's Martin? My, my dress coat and sword, Brown. I'm deeply honored, Your Royal Highness. Oh, no, 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 Sir Horatio. The honor is mine. Thank you. Do you not see what I have brought? Open your eyes, man. Oh, forgive my dullness, Your Royal Highness, but... Would you, you mean... You mean that serving girl over there? <laughs> What's she got to do with... It's Barbara. Horatio. <laughs> My dear, why did you not arrange a less dramatic meeting? This unbridled embrace is hardly fitting before royalty. I have recollections of times when even royal embraces were not bridled. You have a beautiful and most accomplished wife, Horatio. Was it not a pleasant surprise? It was, it was most pleasant. You're, you're, you're very kind, Your Royal Highness. Lord Castlereagh thought the Duchess ought to come here, so I asked if I might come too. It was an inspiration for which I'm devoutly grateful, my dear. <laughs> you overwhelmed me, Horatio.
Barbara was mocking me for my formal attitude, I could not help myself. My mind was in a turmoil. Glad though I was to see her again, I feared the distraction her presence might bring. After all, the mainspring of my life was my professional duty. And as I led her to our quarters in the hotel, the sentries and orderlies sprang to attention, and Dobbs and Howard gaped at the spectacle of the governor ushering in a lady, and the more so as that lady was the sister of England's hero, the Duke of Wellington. You... you are pleased to see me. Of course. Of course, dear. I, it's just... I... I can hardly believe it's just... That you are here, right? Little Richard is well and, and happy. Good. He talks unceasingly. And he still digs. Oh. His corner of the shrubbery looks as though an army of badgers live there. I expect. I, I have some drawings of his in my trunk. Though one could hardly say that they display any notable artistic ability, I... Sorry to disturb you, sir, but the dispatches brought by the gazelle are important. Yes, very well. I'll come to the office. Uh, excuse me, my dear. <laughs> Tony's been beaten again, sir. He has? Where? The Prussians have taken Soissons, sir, and cut up two of Boney's army corps. But that's not all. London's going to put some forces at our disposal at last. Ah, perhaps at last I shall be able to launch a campaign against Paris. What are the forces? Militia, sir. They've begun to volunteer for foreign service, now that the war's nearly over. Mm. And we can have as many battalions as we want. Mm, Militia, I wonder what their military capacities are. We shall need a general to command them. I suppose a... Yes, I suppose a general will be senior in rank to me. Would that lead to complications? Well, we'd... We'd better write some letters, Dobbs. There's just time before dinner. That is the Vicomte de Manville, and... The lady with him is his sister. It's amazing how many people are here. Mm. I've never seen such a variety of uniforms, even at our own court. They're very respectful. Yes, I'd call it obsequious. Oh. I prefer the disciplined respect of the Navy. You think we have a royalty from the way they bow and scrape? You really should try to accept homage graciously, dear. After all, we... You are entitled to it. Oh, you may be. I'm not. You love this sort of thing, and it suits you. It only makes me feel ridiculous. How do you do? Yes, yes, a delightful voyage. Thank you. How do you do? They really are most pleasant people. Oh, by the way, Barbara, you didn't know... Um, Bush is dead. What? Yes, he was killed four days back. He, he was leading... Oh, I'm so sorry, my dear. I, d- I didn't think I... Oh, please. Please let us wait here a moment. I can't go in yet. Oh, Horatio. Well, why did you have to tell me now? I'm on the sorry. threshold of a royal reception. It, it was cruel. I'm sorry, Barbara. I, I, I've spoiled your evening. I, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean, of course, I, You know, I forgot. I, you enjoy this sort of thing. And, Their uh, excellencies, the governor and my lady Barbara on board. <laughs> Oh, hello, Dobbs. Well, something new happened? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good morning, milady. Please pardon my intrusion. Morning, uh, yes, a dispatch from the army. The frogs have gone, sir. Gone? Up, stick and away, sir. General Keogh left for Paris last night. There's not a French soldier left in Rouen. But by heaven, Dobbs, this is sensational. Bonaparte must be desperate for troops to defend Paris. By, by recalling Keogh, he's left all Normandy at our mercy. Yes, sir. I wondered if you'd have any orders in the light of this news. Well, yes. Uh, tell Howard... Um, no, I'll tell him myself. Uh, um, excuse me, my dear. Oh, isn't it, is there not even time for you to eat your breakfast? I'm uh, sorry. I was taught at school that Drake had time to finish his game and beat the Spaniards, too. <laughs> yes, you're quite right, my dear. Go on, have some coffee, Dobbs. Uh, thanks. Uh, this is victory. This is the end. Do, do you really think so? I know it in my soul. That man who has bathed the world in blood is about to fall. Do you realize, Barbara, that the world has been at war since we were children, and now it will be peace? Peace? I hardly know what it means. I shall have to enter Rouen in state. The royalists must be kept happy. Wait a minute. By heaven, I've got an idea. We'll rub in the lesson that it's England's sea power which has turned the scale in this war. Colonel Dobbs. Uh, yes, sir. Warn Howard to have the flame and the Porta Celi ready to get underway. We'll take the Duke and Duchess up to Rouen by water. Oh, Horatio, what a splendid uh, idea. Indeed, yes. May I come, too? Well, why not? Tell Howard it's to be a sort of state voyage. Warn the captains to see about accommodation. 
Our entry into Rouen shall be one of the most famous naval occasions in British history. like heaven to tread a deck again and have my broad pennant hoisted, even though the Bourbon white and gold flew beside it. We bowled up the estuary at a full eight knots, but I knew that when the river narrowed, it might be a different story. But I was happy again, and Barbara was happy to see me so. Even the Duke condescended to engage us in conversation, and it seemed no time at all before luncheon was announced. The party trooped below, and the women squealing at the lowness of the decks and the difficulties of the companion. But hardly was I seated when Freeman slipped in and whispered to me. Carterbeck is inside, sir. You asked me to let you know. Carterbeck, thank you. I'll come up. Uh, please pardon me, Your, Your Royal Highness. Uh, ladies, uh, uh, my presence is required on deck. That's Carterbeck, sir. The top of the reach. Looks a nasty sight. It does indeed. I begin to understand the nature of the explosion that cost Captain Bush's life. Look at those houses. Every one has been cut off six or eight feet from the ground. The church has stood up, sir. Except the roof and the windows, but the key is in ruins. It must have been devastating. After the war, I'm going to erect a monument on the riverbank there, above the key, in honor of Bush. God rest his soul. Amen. <laughs> Before the day was over, I had regretted bringing the royal party by water. They were like a crowd of silly children, and as difficult to manage in the cramped confines of the brig. For myself, I slept that night in a hammock slung on deck, and soon after dawn, we rounded a bend in the river and could see the cathedral towers of Rouen in the distance. But navigation was difficult and slow, and it was early afternoon before we swung round the last bend and anchored in full sight of the city. Barbara joined me on deck. What a beautiful city. And how quiet it seems. Mm. I'm afraid it'll be my business to wake it up. Barbara, look look at those soaring Gothic towers. Yes. You know, it's strange to think that they look down on the burning of Joan of Arc. Ah, here come the people. Mm -hmm. They're gathering on the keys. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the Duke. Ah, I do. I see no sign of any uh, deputation of greeting, Sir Horatio. No, Your Royal Highness, I... I think it might be wiser if I went ashore first to carry out a survey. Uh, Martin, my boat. Where is the reception for His Royal Highness? Why are there no salutes being fired? Why, why are the church bells not ringing? Monsieur, uh, Your Excellency, we, we did not know. We, we were not certain. You saw the royal standard. You knew that His Highness was on his way here to Rouen? Well, uh, there had been rumors, yes, but... Uh, rumors, uh, Excellency would understand in the present unsettled state of affairs. You do not wish too definitely to commit yourself, is that it? Well, I... Uh, yes. His Royal Highness is very seriously annoyed, Mr. Oh? the Mayor. If you wish to regain his favor and that of His Majesty the King, who will follow him, you will make all the amends in your power. Oh, well, a uh, deputation of every person of importance must be on hand two hours from now to welcome His Royal but, Highness. But, Your Excellency, you... If General Bonaparte should return... Every person of importance. Note will be taken of who is present and who is absent. The church bells can begin to ring immediately. The streets will be decorated and accommodation provided for His Royal Highness and his suite. But, monsieur, you do not understand all that this implies. It, it means... It means that you are going to have to decide whether to enjoy the king's favor or not. That's the choice before you. And also the guillotine, if General Bonaparte should prevail. France is free again. A wise man will not hesitate for a moment. My armies at your gates, my ships could blow up your town to pieces. But that's not the manner in which His Royal Highness wishes to enter Rouen. Monsieur le Maire, time presses. Come on. Your Excellency leaves me no choice. It shall be as you wish, though my life becomes forfeit from this moment. Your care shall be my special charge, monsieur.
Your Royal Highness is will ride in this carriage. I think it wiser for myself and Lady Barbara to ride with you as far as the hotel. It, uh, it was a very small reception. Well, all the notables of the city were present, save those who had already fled. The city is decorated, the white flags are out. Your Royal Highness is accepted. Mm, yet the crowds are very silent, huh? Oh, they are numbed with disaster and do not know which way to turn. For all they know, Bonaparte may yet return himself. <laughs> he will not return. I am here. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's that? Who is it? Who is it? Who is Tonight, it? Uh, Colonel Dodd. Oh, Dodd. Important news. May I come in, sir? Well, just uh, wait a moment. Uh, what's the matter, dear? Uh, it's it's Dobbs, dear. It must be important. I, um... Yes. It's all... What, what is it, Dobbs? It's over, sir. Bone is abdicated. Blush is in Paris. Abdicated by him? Victory, Dobbs. The end of 20 years' war? And it's official, sir. Here's the dispatch. Well, the Duke must be told. Is the King still in England? What, what does the dispatch say? Horatio, what is it? Uh, yeah, um, it's all right, Dobbs. Uh, I'll be with you in five minutes as soon as I've dressed. Uh, um, yes, wake the Duke and, uh, and tell him I'm coming. Right, sir. I'll tell him immediately. Barbara. Barbara, darling, it's... It's peace. <laughs> Begging your pardon, sir, but... This is a bit better way of coming to Paris than the last time you came this way. Yeah, it certainly is, Martin. <laughs> I was a prisoner then, <laughs> coming to be shot. Now we we ride in as conquerors. Still, I'd rather sail in, sir, any day. Yeah. Well, British and brute this horse is, too. Well, what's the matter with it? Looks a very good horse to me, Martin. Oh, he's all right. Shall I try to luff him, sir? Oh. He won't luff now. Falls off three points every time. He uh, pulls me arms out to trying to keep him close hold. Yes, well, drop back now, Martin. Um, attention, everybody. Martin, now. All Paris is watching. Dear, wonderful. But do you mean to tell me that you've had this parchment for two days and have not read it? Well, I've glanced at it, but I've been busy, my dear. Oh, busy? Oh, I know that it's only merited, but still... Well, listen, listen, let me read it to you. Oh, very well, my dear. Listen. As the grandeur and stability of the British Empire depend chiefly upon the knowledge and experience in maritime affairs, we esteem those worthy of the highest honor who exert themselves in maintaining our dominion over the sea. Yes, yes, we needn't read all that there. It goes on for hours. England at least knows your value. And listen, the parchment ends. It is just, therefore, that we should distinguish with higher titles a subject who has so eminently served us and his country both as monuments of his own merit and to influence others into a love and pursuit of virtue. Oh, I am very proud of you, dear. Thank you, my love. Why, there, there are only two or three cases in the history of a naval officer being raised to the peerage before attaining flag rank. I congratulate you, my lord. Heaven send that I can live up to it. Lord Hornblower of Smallbridge in the county of Kent. Knight of the Bath and the Baronet of the United Kingdom. And I'd give every title and every order to have dear, honest old Bush back at my side. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers. (laughs) 